today I'd like to talk to you about the link between drinking alcohol and fertility. I, every time I have this conversation with a patient or every time I, I bring this up in conversation, I kind of feel like a negative Nancy. Um, but I did just read a really great systematic review article and I wanted to share the results with you. So I looked at a study, it's from 2017, uh, so not, not too old now. And in research, we kind of sometimes think that five years and older is old. So 2017, um, and this study is what's called a systematic review. And the reason I bring that up is because systematic reviews are kind of considered like a, a really good gold standard way of doing research. And basically what the researchers have done is taken a bunch of other research studies, um, like really assessed them uh, statistically, looked at all those, those data points really clearly, kind of pooled that data together and made some conclusions. Uh, so basically what the study looked at is the link between alcohol cons consumption and a factor called fecundability. And I am brutal at saying that word. So if I have to say it again and I trip over it, I apologize. But fecundability is the probability of achieving pregnancy in any given menstrual cycle. Um, we know that fecundability is affected by a bunch of factors, age being a big one. And so they were looking to see, you know, how does alcohol consumption influence this factor as well? So these researchers pulled together 19 different studies and combined, when they combined all those studies, they actually included about 100,000 women. So it's a pretty big population. Sometimes with an individual study, you know, they'll say, we looked at 26 women and we found, you know, X, Y, and Z result. And that, I mean, I shouldn't say that research isn't helpful. It certainly still can be. But when we look at 26 people, um, there might be factors in that group that don't actually reflect the entire population. When we look at 100,000 people, that's a pretty big a pretty big population. And so we can definitely take some of that data and extract it to kind of the, the population at large. So basically what they did is they, they looked at all these studies. They looked at all these women. How much alcohol were these people drinking? How likely were they to conceive? And they found the following results. So compared to people who did not drink any alcohol, light drinkers or drinking lightly was associated with an 11% reduction in the probability of achieving pregnancy or fecundability. Uh, and they defined light drinking as less than one drink per day, one standard alcoholic beverage, 12.5 grams of alcohol to be exact. Um, when they looked at moderate to heavy drinkers, and this was defined as greater than one drink per day, they found that there was um, a reduction in fecundability um, for 23% reduction compared to non-drinkers. So drinking one or more drinks per day compared to non-drinkers, your probability of achieving pregnancy was reduced by 23%. So these numbers aren't crazy high, but they're significant, right? If in any given cycle, when you're trying to get pregnant, you want to get pregnant. So I think the little factors here that can influence that negatively are worth noting. Um, when we, when we read through this study, there's a few other things of note. So we have to consider that there is still an individualized reaction to alcohol. So while this is like the population at large, your individualized response to alcohol might make this worse for you, for your fertility, and it might not be quite as bad as the study is reporting. Um, this is going to be based on factors like your genetics, uh, you know, the production of certain enzymes in your body that break down alcohol, you know, how well your liver is functioning to process those alcohol metabolites. So definitely that's worth considering. And you might know yourself that you are very sensitive to alcohol um, or that you're not very sensitive to alcohol. And that might influence, like I said, how much that's going to affect your fertility. And the other thing from the study is that they still aren't able to say exactly how alcohol affects our fertility. And so again, considering your own personal menstrual cycle, your fertility history, you know, your miscarriage history, if it exists, your pregnancy history, there's a few factors here that you may want to consider. So one of the proposed mechanisms that alcohol might negatively impact fertility is because there's a change in hormone production. So specifically, you know, we might see changes with estrogen or progesterone production to other hormones called FSH and LH, testosterone levels. So if you've had some blood work done and you know that some of those levels are higher or lower than what's considered optimal, then again, alcohol might exacerbate those issues for you. So if you already are working from a baseline that's not optimal, drinking alcohol might negatively affect that further. Um, and then the other proposed mechanisms are that there could be like direct impacts on the egg itself. So the egg cell might be negatively affected. The maturation of the egg cell might be negatively affected. So like each cycle, our body is going to recruit 
an egg cell, an ovum, and mature it before it ultimately gets ovulated. So that maturation process might be negatively affected. Ovulation itself might not be functioning optimally when we're drinking alcohol. Um, and also implantation may, may be negatively affected. So if you're already someone who you have known ovulation issues, let's say you, you, know, you have a condition like PCOS or you know you're not ovulating consistently each month or your ovulation seems to be delayed, again, drinking alcohol might exacerbate those issues for you. So, you know, what do we do when we see data like this? Um, again, it's a very individualized choice and decision. I, you know, certainly speaking with your care provider, I think is a good first step uh, and looking at sort of your individual risk factors and your individual experience. I think if we kind of look at a good, better, best situation, good would maybe be to reduce our alcohol consumption to, you know, one drink per day. Better would be to be even less than that. So having maybe one drink a week or one drink a month um, to, to really reduce our consumption and best would be to not drink any alcohol at all. Right. And we know that it's, um, you know, we don't really think it's safe for pregnant women to be drinking alcohol. And so we might be extrapolating that kind of information or thought process to even people who are trying to conceive. Um, you know, it's tricky in non pandemic world when we're socializing, we have events to go to, um, you know, people assume that if we're not drinking, oh, we must be pregnant. And, and sometimes we're not ready to share that information and we don't want to tell people, that we're trying and there's societal expectations and norms, I would say the reality maybe for some people with the pandemic is that, you know, there's less social life. So maybe more reason to not drink as much alcohol. On the flip side, we also know that the pandemic has caused more people to drink more alcohol. Um, and again, that's not to say that's right or wrong. Alcohol has definitely been a coping mechanism for a lot of people to deal with distress and anxiety and uncertainty of everything going on. But it is worth, you know, doing a little bit of a self-reflection you know, how much alcohol realistically am I drinking in any given day or any given week or any given month, any given cycle? Is that something I want to reduce? And if I do, you know, what are the strategies I'm going to take to do that? And, and certainly that's where working with your care provider, your naturopathic doctor, your medical doctor, if you need some support in that area can be really helpful. If you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to send me a DM. I'll link the actual study I'm talking about below if you want to read it for yourself. Um, and I'm more than happy to, to help answer any questions. Okay. Take care.